Hey, what's up, guys? It's Felion, and we're back with another series of Ace Attorney Online. I got some good uh, comments and some likes, actually, so I think I might continue it because I actually really enjoy the series. Let's see what. Oh, get rid of that. Let's see what which one we're gonna play. Um. Uh. Phoenix right. Let's go to the Turnabout Mob. Yes, the Turnabout Mob, the perfect case. I wonder what this this is one to provide, right? Uh, come on, picture. Click here to skip everything. Well, I'm gonna skip everything. All right. <clears throat> February first, one p.m. International Airport. It's been a while since I last stepped foot in this country. Five years to be exact. And now, I return. This certainly brings nostalgic feelings. Beep, beep, beep. Well, I barely return. I already get a phone call. Let's see who it is. I think this is a bit loud. Let's, I don't want to listen to this phone. There we go. Hello, this is Miles Edwards speaking. Hello, this is Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth speaking. No, madam. The reason I just said that this is Miles Edgeworth speaking is because I'm actually Damon Gant. Sorry, I should have been clear, so I... Huh? Oh! You, you said that? Right? Sorry. I'm a little bit off the ball today. Excuse me, but... Who are you? Oh, uh, right, um, I've been recently stated as a chief prosecutor. What can I help you with, Miss Chief Prosecutor? We're needing your help right now, Mr. Edgeworth. All the other prosecutors are busy with something else. Yes. What is it? Uh, actually, I think it was better if you go to the crime scene itself. I'll text message you the place before you should go, where you should go. Okay, goodbye then, Mr. Chief Prosecutor. Babe, not much later than I stepped foot here. I already have work. No rest for the wicked, I guess. My name is Miles Edgeworth, and I'm a prosecutor. For five years. Alright, so I'm playing as the prosecutor. Ah, this is gonna be fun. I'm sure to tell him he's guilty the whole damn game. For five years, I have been studying foreign court systems in Europe. I had to act as a prosecutor multiple times in multiple countries to learn about the different court systems there. I have returned for multiple reasons, and most to share my learnings with the American society and, to, and see to it that its court system grows. However, looks like I'll have to take care of another case before that. February 1st, 1.30 p.m. crime scene. Looks like there are a few police officers running around, and there are paint buckets everywhere. That's horrifying. Wait a minute. Kataki? Mr. Edgeworth, how nice of you here, pal. This this voice. I know who it is. <laughs> yes, it's the Gumshoe is back. The Gumshoe is back. Oh, my God. About time. Mr. Edgeworth, you're already back from your vacation. The script of this movie is causing Adobe Flasher. Why don't... Give a shit about Adobe Flash while you're doing this. That wasn't a vacation detective, but yes, I'm back. It's so nice to see you again, pal. It felt like ages since we last saw. Detective Dick Gumshoe, a detective I worked with a lot in the past. While he is a scatterbrained sometimes, he can overlook even the most obvious pieces of evidence. He's quite a good person at heart, and an intention to help. He's also trustworthy. He's also retarded, but... So, I guess you're in charge of the case, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Not formally, but apparently I am. You can just ask me anything you like, then, pal. Whatever. Ugh. Um, okay, so... Let me, uh... Let me, uh, examine... The crime scene and ask what the... This is a Kataki mansion. There's some paint spilled on the gate. You know anything about that, Detective? Sure thing! Dots. Um. Um. <laughs> you don't have a single clue, do you? <laughs> I guess it was too much to expect from the good detective. 
Well, he doesn't know about that, so, uh, move. Do I move? My, my, do I move? Where do I move? Right here? here? What the hell? Go back. I don't know what they're talking about. So your email has a number of functions that's quite handy, my cell phone. Let's uh, present to him my phone. You like my phone? Dots. <laughs> I guess it's a good detective doesn't have much to say about this. Sigh. So let's talk to him in general. Details of the case. Of course, I should have thought of that. So what do you know about the case, detective? Well, I'm in charge of the investigation, so I know pretty much everything. And it happened yesterday night, right here, in the Kataki Mansion. The crime scene is somewhat simple. Arsony. Arsony. The stolen item was a Kataki diamond, a one-of-the-kind Kataki heirloom. The diamond is priceless. I mean that in the good sense of the word, pal. It was supposedly stolen by the defendant, Ross Rose Cadaverini. We still haven't found it. Kataki Diamond add to the court record. With a precious Kataki heirloom, supposed priceless, one of the kind, supposedly stolen by Rose Cadaverini. Diamond is still missing. Well, let's see the profiles. That's me. Dude, I'm so cool. I'm at Dwarf now. Wait. Did you say... Cadaverini? Yeah, pal. I, I assume you know all about them. On one hand, you have the Cadaverini family. Ran by crime boss Bruno Cadaverini. The, the Cadaverini family is a group of dangerous gangsters. Well, shit. What's going on there, huh? Whoops. What the hell? Hey! Flashfire? Flashfire doesn't want to show me this. Alright, Flashfire. You play. Holy shit, it's 84. A dangerous crime boss from the car. I never had to find it. However, the Caravarini family and the boss Brito seem to be recently losing power from my reliable sources. Hey! Do you want to abort the script? No! I don't want to abort it. Hey! Start working, huh? Adobe? Adobe? Adobe, stop. Well, that doesn't mean they aren't dangerous. They aren't nearly as dangerous as they were five years ago. On the other hand, the Kataki family. The current head of the family is Winfred Big Wins Kataki. The Katakis are gangsters, however, they are community oriented. Apparently, they do some community services every now and then. However, they're still very dangerous threats, and really see they have been ris risen in power. And are almost as powerful as the Caravarinis. I can see why this case seems to be under scrutiny. Anyway, as I was saying, pal, a witness to Kataki's son and possible next head reported the murder and press charges against the Caravarinis. We invaded the Caravarini mansion with all the men we had in case things got ugly, but luckily nobody but the defendant was at the house, so arresting her was easy. We got a search warrant to search down the place, but no signs of the diamond, and it wasn't found in the defendant's person, either. As the Kataki's and Caravini's are rival gangs, family robbery is our most possible motive as of now. We tried to question the defendant, but she's clammed up completely. Our witness, Walkie Kataki, is being a little more com cooperative and is being questioned at the percent. And, uh, well. Anything wrong, Detective? It's about the defense attorney, Mr. Edgeworth. So far, everything looks so good. But I should have asked more about the witness, the defendant, and the defense attorney. But no one asked about the freaking defense attorney. So, who is the defense attorney? Ever heard of someone named Christoph Gavin, Mr. Are you fucking kidding me? Christoph Gavin is the defendant? What the hell? It, like, it all relates to this case here last time. What the? Christoph Gavin? Yes, I seem to have heard something about him. You mean Gary? You? Hey, guys. Christoph Gavin, I've heard of him, both in Europe and here. But I've never been involved in a case against him. Well, I fucking wrecked him as Phoenix, so... 
Apparently he has German ori origins and was a talented lawyer there. However, he set for a more successful career in America. He isn't quite popular and barely loses his cases. In the blink of an eye, he built a career of success. Though, he started getting even more successful five years ago and the news spread worldwide. The most remark remarking feature of his, of his is his calm demeanor and personality while in court and that's why some refer to him as the coolest defense in the West. Damn. So you know everything about him. Um, Docs? Why do you look so worried? I've already seen this guy working before and let me tell you Mr. Edger, he's one smooth customer. He's real good pal. He's like the defense attorney version of you. Should I feel complimented or insulted? Don't worry, detective. I won't lose as easy as you think I will. Sorry if I offended you, pal. Of course you're gonna beat him, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, I'll toss the defendant. Do you know anything more about the defendant, detective? I already told you pretty much everything, sir. She's probably being questioned at the detention center right now, but I doubt you'll get anything out of her. Hmm. Perhaps, but I might as well see it for myself. Oh yeah, I for, forgot to tell you something, pal. The script is running yet. Yeah. And what might that be, detective? There's one piece of evidence found in the crime scene. What? And you wait until now to tell me? Sorry, pal. Uh, I kind of forgot it. Here you go, Miss A knife? It's called a shiv, and we examined it. It has the defendant's fingerprints on it. So it must belong to the defendant, pal. Well, this is good info, detective. At least I have something other than a witness's testimony to back up my case. And I found the court record. Let's look at this knife real quick. Also, as a sheriff, I'm... Alright, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's ask about the witness. So, about this witness. You mean, walkie-talkie? No, detective. Your mom. <laughs> you said he's been in the interrogated department, correct? Yeah, pal. You should ask your own questions to him as well. Let's see this fixed. Alright, so we're having a problem with Bruto Academy. I'm gonna have to fix that. We got Rose right here. Who's this walkie talkie? Yeah, I'm gonna fix that, guys. Sorry about the inconvenience. I had exactly that in mind. I think I'm, I think I'm done here. Hey guys, we're gonna take a little break here. Um, sorry about the whole uh, flashback thing. As you can see, Bruto does not want to reveal his face, and Adobe's being stupid, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But, uh, yeah, this is Feely on now. We'll see you guys later in the next episode. Make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for more Phoenix Right, and I will see you guys later. Peace.